Here's step-by-step -step instructions on how to land a tarpon. Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over the strategies for catching and landing a tarpon. Now, I'm not going to be going over the baits and rigs and that kind of thing, where to go, but I've done that in some prior videos and you can check those out in my uh, playlist, Tarpon Fishing. Um, but this one is going to be kind of geared towards the person that's never targeted and never fought a tarpon, never landed one, or maybe you've gotten to the point where you've got a few bites but you've never been successful at actually landing them. So this will kind of, I think it will help you to understand what you're in for to let you better prepare for it okay so i'm going to be breaking it down from before the catch to the bite to fighting the, the tarpons to the landing section and just to give you a heads up so it may make you a little bit more successful now the first step for tarpon fishing is before you even put a line out okay i can't tell you it happens a lot is you go, you get to your spot, you're not really all that prepared, and you just want to get fishing right away, even though everything is in disarray, you're not really ready for it, but you just want to kind of get that line out in the water. So you throw it out there, and it lands right on a tarpon's face, and it hammers that bait, and it just whacks you, and you're not ready, and maybe it kicks off there, or while you're trying to struggle to get everything else organized, and then it gets off, and you blew out that whole area is shut down because you weren't ready for it okay so it's very important to before you put a bait out to get everything organized so you're ready for the battle okay and what that means for me a lot of times is i don't have my mirage drive in and that's very important for getting the kayak turned in the right direction um, getting stuff out of the way um, having my rods set up so that uh, i know if this one gets a bite, then this rod back here is open so I could put a spare rod back there. Um, where my cutters are, my uh, hook pullers are, um, my quick release anchor system is ready to go so I could just toss it off and uh, be free of it without thinking. Uh, and just being ready, okay? Same deal, if that one went off, if this rod went off, if that rod went off, okay? If I got a bite back here, what am I going to do? Okay, so you're just organized, so when it happens, you're ready for it. Now, one of the parts of it that will be most helpful, I think, for people to understand is how the battle is fought, okay? With tarpon, the way it works is 80% of the, the process of being successful is the first 10 seconds, okay? When that tarpon grabs that bait, and it does its two to five jumps, that's 10 seconds. If you're still hooked up after that 10 seconds, you're 80% of the way there, okay? Then you just got 20% of left, which is just battling and wearing out that fish, and then the process of physically landing it, all right? So that's kind of the one way to prepare for it. So you have, that 10 second is just so hugely important. Now, the odd part about it is that first 10 seconds, you really have very little control over it. It happens so fast, it's most of the time doubtful if you may or may not have the rod and you're watching where your bait is and you see the blow up. But the generally the way it works is, you'll hear your drag screaming. But what happens is that tarpon's taking that bait, okay, and then it's the line is rubbed against its face or on its body or it felt the tension in his mouth and it instantly freaks out and it's the first thing it does is jump okay so it bites it feels something's wrong it jumps okay and then when it's in the air and it's shaking its head that's when the line finally starts pulling and your drag just starts screaming and then you look out and then what you actually generally see unless you're looking specifically at it is just a big bathtub explosion and a big old hole there and then maybe the second third fourth fifth jump you get to see okay in that meantime you're like in shock and then you're reaching for your rod 
and right about that time frame is that 10 seconds over it's finished is two to five jumps and then it's submarining and then you have the rod in your hand okay and that's kind of why I say though it's 80% of the, of the battle but you have really no control because it's generally over that fast okay so if you're tossing lures it might be a little different situation where you get that hook up but that initial part is still the same as soon as they feel it they're up in the air and that's when you actually have the idea of what's going on and then you start thinking about what you can do and then by then it's over okay but in that process what can you do if you can get to the rod fast enough you can make sure that that rod point is bowing to the king giving it slack okay um, you want to make sure you don't have a, a locked up drag and we'll go into this in the next step um, and you're following that fish and you're just getting through those two to five jumps that first 10 seconds don't worry about anything else just focus on getting through that 10 seconds once it gets down to that submarine stage it stops jumping then you can relax and start putting your stuff away unlocking your uh, quick release anchor uh, grabbing your paddle or your pedals and start angling yourself so that tip of that kayak is facing that fish now the other way that'll help you to understand what's in store for you is that 10 seconds is 80% of it while the other 20% of that battle is a half an hour all right so you catch a decent sized tarpon not the little juveniles but the full sized tarpon you're in for an average 30 minute fight all right plain and simple 30 minutes okay so hopefully with you understanding that that'll give you the ability to adjust your fighting style to not understand that you don't need to lock down your drag and pump the crap and reel the crap out as fast as you can when you have to space this out for 30 minutes okay so the best thing to do is just take your time and make sure that there's always pressure on that fish the rods always bent that you've got everything in order you got that um, kayak or your boat everything is going in the right direction you're not going too fast you're not going too slow you're doing constant winds you're not dropping the rod tip where it goes slack um, you're prepared for that jump and being able to bow for it when it starts reaching for it okay all those things because you're not stressed out over it being done in two three five ten minutes okay 30 minutes you have to run this guy down all right and this will help you like I was talking about the drag is you don't want to lock the drag down you want that fish to run and be on pressure you could use your hand for to control it a bit but you never want to have to worry about locking it up okay when you put too much pressure on those fish it causes them to want to jump and although it's neat it's picturesque it's great for uh, videos and YouTube it's not great because that's when you tend to lose your fish all right so the longer you can keep them just steadily under pressure towing you along you keeping pressure by uh, ruling when you need to and it's a hundred feet out it's no big deal you got 30 minutes okay let that fish wear himself out because even if you catch right up to the fish and it's right beside their your kayak your boat if it's still green you're not grabbing it okay it's gonna freak out it's gonna be jumping flopping yanking its head it's gonna pull the hook break the hook break your line break your hand break your arm or it's just gonna where it's where the hole out and it's gonna pop the hook okay so before we get to that even that end section where you're about to land that that uh, tarpon you want it worn out so it's exhausted okay so hopefully that part of it will help you understand the process it's a 30 minute fight so you don't have to stress out and be overreacting to stuff take your time you got plenty of time okay so let's say for instance the way i run like i'm using live baits now under a bobber um what will happen is like i said is that it'll grab the baits it'll take off for it a little while but then it's going to fill the tension it's going to be jumping the drag is going to be stream screaming okay my process is is that okay i've all prepared everything's organized clean okay before i do anything i'll grab the rod okay have it ready and as it's doing its thing it's ripping off drag then i can start tensioning down the drag okay now my drag i would say i set at a medium light very light so that it is basically pull in drag nonchalant okay very minimal okay 
if I need to put a little extra tension beyond that, I could palm it with my hand, finger it, and just put a little bit more tension. I could do a little bit more, but you never want to over tighten your drag, okay? Because as soon as it's jump, it's going to kick that hook loose because you're going to have too much drag. So that's why everybody keeps on saying bow to the king to give it slack. But if you start off with a lighter drag, you can let the drag do the work so you're not having to be so perfect about getting that much slack to that fish. All right. So I would say that's about it that I need there. And that's a hundred pound fish doing whatever it wants. Okay. The other thing you have to remember with drag on a kayak, drag is useless. Okay. If you have a big fish, you pull on your, your rod, the kayak just goes towards the fish. Okay. Cause there's no resistance to pushing a kayak. Put a kayak on the water and then stand next to it and push it with your pinky and it'll move okay with zero resistance same thing if you have a big fish on there you can put 40 pounds of drag heave ho the fish is not going to feel more than the three to five pound that you would have it set like this because the kayak is going to get shoot forward and add that to the fact what i say is that you have a 30 minute battle you don't want that fish right next to you when it's still green diving underneath you getting you all squirreled up you want it away from you not a hundred yards away, but a good distance away, slowly moving towards it is fine, okay? And you're just constantly just pumping and winding, slow pump, slow wind, so you're, you're keeping as much pressure as you can. The rod is bent, so there's always pressure on that hook, and you're ready to bow if you need to. You're ready to put a little bit more tension on it if you need to, okay? And you're using that rod tip to control the, the, the kayak, so that you're facing that fish, always facing that fish. You never want to be perpendicular because that's again, you start putting full drag on there and it causes your instability. Okay, now we're 25 minutes into the battle. Uh, we've worn it down pretty good. We're fighting it and it's been out there. Now we're getting it close. It's around to the kayak, whatever side you're more comfortable on, okay? This is the point where you're gonna start putting pressure on that fish to finally wear it out to the point where it's exhausted okay you could tell when a tarpon is ready to be landed because you could pull the tarpon backwards okay it'll constantly be swimming forward it's towing you along okay when you could use your rod tip pull back on its face and make it twist back on itself or it's pulling forward and it's struggling and you can physically pull that 100 pound tarpon backwards okay that's when you know that that tarpon is tired out enough where you're going to be able to control it by grabbing it okay if it's still cranking and diving and juting back and forth don't even worry about grabbing it because you're not going to be able to hold on to it okay you want to just wear it out to the point where like i said you pull up on it it'll stand up on its tail actually is a good way to tell you'll pull it straight backwards or it'll roll back over itself and be upside down and you could pull it right towards you, okay? Terribly bad for the fish, terribly bad for the fish. You really don't want to exhaust it to that point, but hey, if you're gonna be wanting to do that, grab hold of it, photo opportunity, okay? Do it, but then make sure you put plenty of time in the recovery process so that they can swim away. Okay, the finally the landing it, grabbing it, all right. Um, you basically want them sitting tail to the ground, face sitting up, and just head against the kayak with their mouth open, not doing anything, okay? Dead in the water, okay? That's realistically the most convenient way to grab it, and they're not going to do anything. Most of the time, you're never going to get them to the point so what you're going to do is you're going to get them to the point where you can control it with just your rod. They're that tired. You're going to grab the leader, okay? You could hand grip, uh, wrap it if you're comfortable with it. If you're not, just pinch it and roll it so it's not wrapped around. You just have it pinched off. Grab it, and then you're going to go, don't bass <laughs> grab it because you're talking a 100-pound fish and your thumb is just not strong enough. You go fingers in the mouth thumb under the jaws and you're going to lock onto it okay and if you want to do it correctly you're going to put 100 percent on that grip 
and you're gonna lock up your whole front body and just lock it down because that thing is gonna feel that and it's gonna st at the minimum start shaking its head okay my process is if I can as fast as I can is to grab that front uh, with my left hand in the jaws and then as soon as I can get two hands on the front jaw and just hold on like a bull rider all right and it's gonna shake and swim okay if you can survive again another two or three seconds of head shakes they'll give up it break their spirit and then they'll stop and then you just basically you can relax a little bit you definitely want to hold on to them because you don't want them to sink they're exhausted you want to give them be able the time to swim them so they can recover it so you can loosen up a bit but you still want to hold it because they'll still occasionally shake their head just not as much as the first force when you first grab them at that point keep their head in the water okay take your photos do not take them out of the water illegal okay once you're done with that fully in the water tight grip on it okay because they're still occasionally going to be shaking their heads and then pedal paddle turn your motor on and cruise and cruise and cruise and cruise and keep on cruising 10 minutes if you have to to the point where they're riding themselves they're breathing they're kicking they're swimming okay um, s their body to try to get that lactic acid out of their muscles and just keep going until they basically will kick loose and take off in front of you and that's the process there okay i hope you found that a bit helpful i know it's just a lot of talking but uh, if you go back and review some of my tarpon videos uh, it kind of goes through those processes, the good and the bad, but uh, just remember, before you put out that bait, I can tell you how many times it's happened, throw it out the bait, as soon as it hits the water, it gets smacked, all right? And uh, you just, it'll just help you so much to be pre-prepared before you get started, okay? Step two, 10 seconds. You just got to survive that first 10 seconds, and you're almost there, all right? Take a deep breath, be prepared now that you know what's going to happen. By the time your mind gets into focus, it's already going to be in the air and jumping. Okay, So you're going to grab that rod, you're going to be bowing, uh, you're going to be tightening the drag up just a little bit, medium light tension, and then you're going to be focused on getting through those two to five jumps without losing them. Okay, After that point, boom, release your anchor, get your kayak or boat turn towards that fish and then slow and steady you got 30 minutes to fight this fish before you attempt to land it once you've got it tired out you'll know it because you can control that fish by the rod I could turn a hundred pound tarpon with a medium weight uh, ugly stick because they're so exhausted they just become dead weight and if you can basically as they're swimming away from you you could grab that to palm that drag and pull them back and they will physically move swim backwards or their head will get pulled back over themselves or they'll turn around and roll over themselves then you know then you're ready they're ready for you to start going for the hand grab okay at that point you should be able to just maneuver them by grabbing that leader moving their face towards you don't just slowly do it you want to do it you want to go for it grab that nose okay and hold on even though they're dead tired they're just gonna get shocked by that movement and you just gotta grab onto them get both hands as soon as you possible get through those initial shakes and then you're golden take your photo swim them around for a while as much as you can and then you're golden success tarpon check so hopefully that helps again uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next video and after that, do you really want to catch a tarpon? <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next video. Bye.